Hello and welcome back to Linode. When it comes to software engineering, it's really important to have some sort of repository that lets you and other team members interact with the project and contribute to it. Now, when it comes to version control and software repositories in general, Git is, well, the king. It rules everything. It's the most popular version control utility out there, but actually other types of repositories exist as well. Now, like I mentioned, I'm going to give you guys some basic commands when it comes to SVN. A full tutorial when it comes to SVN is beyond the scope of this video, but today what we're going to do is look at some of the basic usage of SVN. So at least that way you could add those commands and options to your tool set, and you never know. Maybe you'll find yourself working with a subversion repository as well. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at some of the fundamentals of SVN. So in order to use Subversion, we will need to make sure that it's installed. And here on my instance, what I'll do is, well, exactly that. I'll make sure that Subversion is installed. Now, what you might need to do first and foremost is update your package repository index if you haven't already done that for today. I have though, so I won't run this particular command. But what I will do is install Subversion. And for that, I'll run sudo apt install. And the package is, of course, Subversion, so I'll press enter. And then enter again, because I'll accept the default of Y. Y is capital, that means it's the default if you don't actually type anything, so I could simply press enter here. And we'll let that install. And now that we have that package installed, what I can do is type SVN, and then dash dash version, just like you see here. And that'll give us some information regarding the subversion binary that we've just installed. And next, what we're going to do is take a look at some of the subversion CLI commands that we can use to work with subversion repositories. And the way that this usually works out is we type SVN. And if we want to copy a repository locally, we could use checkout for that. And then after that, we type the URL to the repo. Now, what I'm going to do is actually check out a subversion repository that actually exists out there on the internet. And specifically, this is for a subversion book that's available. But anyway, what I'll do is type the URL of svn.code.sf and then .net slash p slash svn book and then source. So I'll press enter. And as you can see here, it's copying down the repository locally. So I'll give this a minute or two to finish and then I'll be right back. And well, it's done. In this case, I've checked out revision 6055 of this repository. And if I list the contents of my current working directory, you can see right here that I have a folder called source. And inside that folder, I have the contents of that repository. And to show another example of the contents of the repository, I'll let you guys view the readme file. And here it is which is of course very common when you have any software repository. Readme files will give you some information about how to get started with the repository. Now, another thing that I would like to point out is when it comes to checking out a repository, we can actually use a shorthand version of the checkout keyword right here by simply typing CO. And what that's going to do is pull down the repository. It's going to be exactly the same as before, but I just had to type fewer characters. So if you didn't already know you could do that, well, now you do. Now, as you work with a software repository, it's often going to be the case that other people will be updating that repository. And that's because having a repository for our code allows multiple people to work on the project. Now, our local copy of that repository is not going to automatically update. We'll need to do that ourselves, and we should definitely do that before we commit any changes to the repository. We want to make sure that anything we're doing locally actually better reflects what's going on in the repository itself. Now, obviously, you would probably want to create a branch if you're doing your own work. But anyway, I'll go into that repository, the one that I downloaded locally, which is this one right here. And the command to update this repository to pull down the most recent changes is svn and then update. Now, as you can see, I'm still on revision 6055. So there's really nothing that I have to do here. But if I had a repository that was being constantly updated, or maybe a team member told me that they added something to the repository and they want me to work with the latest version of that repository, 
then svn update is exactly the command to use for that purpose. Now let's go ahead and see some commands that pertain to updating information within the repository. And the first example that I'm going to give you is actually the process of adding a file or directory to the repository. So what I'll do is I'll use nano. I'll create a new file, and this is not going to be a source code file. It's just an example. We can pretend like it has any contents inside that we'd like, but what I'll do is just type some text in here. So I'll type hello world, and then I'll save the file. So next, what I could do is run SVN status. And in the second line of the output, we have a question mark next to new file.txt. So we have a new file here, but it's not actually part of version control. It's not part of subversion. If I wanted to go ahead and add it to the repository, what I could do to accomplish that is I could type SVN and then add, and then I'll type the name of the file, which in my case is new file.txt. So we see the capital A to the left. So we're adding a new file. But what we could also do, of course, is delete a file as well. So when it comes to deleting a file, what we could do is run SVN and then delete and then the name of the file. Now, of course, if you have pending changes, it's not going to let you do that. I've never actually committed this file to the repository, but we can ignore this error for now. The whole point was for me to give you the SVN delete command, which is exactly how you would delete something that's within the repository. And perhaps a better example of that is I could simply delete the readme file. And since the readme file was committed to the repository, it should actually let me do that. And it did. If I run SVN status again, you can see here on the first line of output, we have a capital D next to readme. So that's going to be deleted. We have new file.txt, which is pending being added to the repository. Actually, I've added it already, but I didn't commit it yet. So we have A next to that. That's a pending change. Now there's some additional commands that I'll give you guys, and one of which is the make dir command, and not the standard make dir command that you're probably already familiar with in terms of Linux. SVN actually has its own version of that. And what that allows us to do is add a directory to the repository. And we can see that close to the middle of the output here, we see A and then tester showing that we're adding a new directory to the repository. So next what I'm going to do is show you that you can actually move a file. So I'll just go into the trunk directory and I'll go into the tools directory. Now, before I go any further, one thing that I would like to point out is that this is not my repository so I will not be committing any of these changes upstream. It'd be a little weird if I had done that because these are just test commands, not some actual work. So I'm going to keep all of these changes local. And also that's why I feel like I can freely move things around. And speaking of moving things around, we could run SVN move as well, which is another of the SVN commands that I would like to show you. And what this does is it lets you move a file or folder from one place to another. And actually it lets you change the name of an object as well. But what I'll do is just randomly choose the last file right here and I'll just move it up one directory. So it's not all that unlike the MV command in Linux. And we have an A next to svnbook.el. In the trunk directory, we have D next to its current location. So obviously you would probably want to be careful when, you know, working with files in trunk. But considering that we're not actually going to be permanently making any changes to this repository, it's okay to practice. Continuing, we also have SVN info as well. And that gives you some information about the repository itself. For example, we see the revision number, which we saw earlier. But in addition to that, we have the date of the most recent change which as of the time I'm recording this video happens to be on April 7th of 2022. You can see that there in the last line of output. We have the username of the individual that made that change. And we have some other information there about the repository as well. I've already showed you guys the output of SVN status, which as you know by now will give you the status of the repository. But the reason why I'm showing you the status of SVN again 
is because I want to show you how the output differs when we add the verbose option or dash V. In fact, the screen actually scrolled several times, but the takeaway here is that if you want to view additional information and perhaps SVN status by itself wasn't enough, maybe it wasn't descriptive enough, you could run SVN status along with dash V and that'll give you a lot more information just like you see here. Now, continuing from here, what I would like to do is show you the command to commit your changes. Now, I'm not going to send these changes upstream or anything like that. Like I mentioned, I really don't want to sabotage this repository, especially considering all I've done is just add test files and it's of no value to anyone that works with the repository. But I will show you at least part of the process. So to commit our changes, we will run SVN and then commit, then dash M, and then we'll type a message. Now, I don't actually have anything to, you know, share when it comes to my changes. So what I'll do is type my commit message. I think that's good enough for an example. I'll press enter. Of course, it's not actually going to let me do this. I'm not actually a member of this project right here. I really don't have a username or any credentials whatsoever. But if I did, I could type my password right here. And if I have access to the repository, I could push these changes up to the repository. I'm going to actually cancel out of here because again, I'm not trying to sabotage anything. I just wanted to show you guys some example SVN commands. And you know what? I think at this point I've done that. Now the subject of version control and software repositories is actually a very big topic. I think with the commands and options that I gave you guys in this video, you should have more than enough information to actually get started. So hopefully this video has helped you guys out. And if it has, please be sure to click that like button and also subscribe. And I will be seeing you guys again very soon. Thanks for watching.